Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice, a very exponential equation. I, I use, I call this a very exponential because of the presence of three e's, so we have e to the power, e to the power, e to the power z equals five halves. Well, isn't this like a standard type of equation? Well, I don't think it's pretty standard because I haven't seen this type of problem in any textbook or any book um, that, you know, has the title complex analysis or complex something. Maybe I'm wrong and some books might contain it. If you do know of any book that contains these types of problems, let, let us know in the comment section down below because I'd be curious to know. Uh, the, so far, the books that I looked at did not have these kinds of equations. Anyways, so I'm, I hope that I bring something interesting to you. And if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos on the basics of complex numbers. If you have any suggestions for problems, let us know in the comment section down below. There's also a form you can fill out. Anyways, so what makes this problem interesting is the presence of five halves on the right-hand side. You might be asking, why? What is so special about five halves? Well, five halves is just 2.5, right? That's actually what makes it interesting. So let's go ahead and write it down. We're going to do a little arithmetic here and a little bit of inequalities. We're going to compare some you know, numbers. We'll use properties of inequalities. And we'll arrive at something interesting at the end and you know, just conclude with some interesting facts. Anyway, so start with 5 halves. That's our special number, okay? 5 halves is 2.5, exactly, right? And guess what makes it special? It is less than e which is Euler's number, which is about 2.7. I can't remember the uh, hundredth digit, hundredths digit, <laughs> the, what, what comes after the seven, but I, I, I know at least that it's 2.7, therefore 2.5 is less than e. Why is this important? Let's take a look. So we have e to the power e to the power e to the power z, which is five halves, and that is less than e. Make sense? 5 halves is less than e, then this is 5 halves. We're given that, right? Now, focus on the exponent. If e to the power something is less than e, and that thing needs to be less than 1, don't you think? So e to the power, e to the power z must be less than 1. You can also think about the contrapositive, like if e to the e to the z is greater than 1, then when you do e to the power that number, you're going to get something larger than e. Think about it. For example, if you use 2 instead of e to the e to the z, e to the second power is going to be greater than e, which also proves that what I said is true, right? Okay, and we'll have another inequality after this. Now focus on the exponent one more time. If e to the something is less than 1, that exponent needs to be less than 0. Why? Let's think about it. When you have something like e to the power the exponential function in other words, right? If you, we know that the exponential function is going to have an intersection point with the y-axis at 0, 1. So if z is 0, then e to the power 0 is 1, right? If z is 0, then e to the z is 1. So what happens if that is less than 0? Then you're going to get values that are less than 1. Make sense? So what makes this less than 1 is a negative exponent. Make sense? I hope it does. <laughs> so we ended up with something interesting because look, e to the power z is less than 0. Are you sure about that? This is impossible for real z, right? So the solutions are non-real? Wait a minute. This channel is all about complex numbers, so that makes sense, right? So the solutions are going to be non-real, so we have to be careful. Nice. Okay, great. Now, how do we solve it though, right? I mean, we know that z is not going to be real, and that makes sense. So let's go ahead and try to find z. So I'll also show you a different perspective on the z not being real. So we have e to the e to the e to the z equals 5 halves, right? Let's go to natural log both sides. I know Wolfram Alpha writes it as log but I write it as ln because it's the natural logarithm. Make sense? So let's go ahead and ln both sides. That's going to bring down the exponent, which is kind of huge in this case. 
So we're going to go ahead and bring this down to the front. That's going to give us e to the e to the z times ln e, which is 1, by the way, equals ln 5 halves. Okay, I could put the 5 halves in parentheses, but I don't think that's necessary. I hope you'll understand. Uh, I don't like uh, putting extra symbols in place. I know some people find it ambiguous, but don't worry about it. ln and 5 halves don't mix easily. Maybe ln x sometimes can be a little confusing because... By the way, we don't have a function called ln x, as far as I know. So this would not be misunderstood as, you know, like we don't have anything like this, do we? I don't think so. If we do, then let us know in the comment section, okay? So far we got this, and let's go ahead and ln both sides one more time, but let's just move this. I forgot to leave some room for the new ln. Let's use a different color. So we're going to ln one more time, but this time I want to use parentheses for a good reason, and now we get this in the front ln e is one more one more ln e is one one more time and now we get ln of ln five halves and again you know what is so significant about this like you can just ln one both sides one more time and like can we just not ln and ln e to the z is ln 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 five halves right what is what is so difficult about it? Let's just, you make a big deal out of this and z equals that. Okay, here's the problem. Houston, we have a problem. Let's go ahead and find out what the problem is. So let's go ahead and erase this because this is not good. Now let me tell you. ln of ln 5 halves is problematic because 5 halves is less than e, remember that? So ln of 5 halves is less than ln e, which is 1. So ln of something less than 1 is less than ln 1, which is 0. So this number is negative. Make sense? Okay. What is the big deal? e to the z equals a negative number. Again, we arrive at the same thing. And if you also think about it, like if you graph the ln function, the graph of ln, you'll realize that ln 5 halves is less than 1, right? So ln of a number less than 1 is going to be negative. Make sense? Like this. Okay. I have to make sense. So we have to be very careful while solving this problem. So here's what we get from here. e to the z is equal to ln of ln 5 halves, which is negative. But let's go ahead and make it positive. How do we make it positive? By putting a minus sign in front of it like this. I know this looks weird. And this probably looks like a negative number. It has a minus sign. But trust me, it is a positive number. And you can check with your calculator. In other words, negative ln, ln 5 halves is greater than 0. In other words, in other words, absolute value of ln, ln 5 halves is equal to the opposite of ln, ln 5 halves because that's a negative number. Now it is positive. Make sense? Okay. This is greater than 0. Trust me on that one. And now here's what we're going to do. Since we have e to the z equals a negative number, and we kind of put the negative 1 in the front, now we're going to do a little bit of hocus pocus. First, let's realize that you can write a complex number as r e to the i theta, right? Any complex number can be written in that form, where r is real and greater than or equal to 0, and theta is the m argument. And again, that's a real number because it's multiplied by i. But even if uh, theta is not real, we can still convert it to something more meaningful for our purpose. Anyways, e to the z is, first I'm going to write the uh, modulus, which is r. Remember, this is a positive quantity. Multiply by e to the power i. Now, since we had a negative 1, we're going to write it as i pi. But I'm also going to be adding multiples of 2 pi so that our solution is complete in this case, right? So I'm going to go ahead and natural log both sides, and that's going to give us z equals ln of negative ln, ln 5 halves, which is a lot of lns, but there are some, there's some negativity in there too, plus i times pi plus 2 pi n. Now what does this look like? If n is equal to 0, let's keep it simple for a while, z is going to be approximately negative 2.44 plus i pi. So there's your complex number. And pi, if you want, you can replace with 3.14. If you don't like pi, then you could probably write it as 3.14i. Uh -oh, 3 That's one of the values of z, approximately. 
By the way, ln, I kept saying that ln of ln 5 halves is negative. This is approximately negative 0 0.087. And this brings us to the end of the studio. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.